my name is Eileen and I'm the youth librarian here at the Portland District Library. I want to welcome everybody to our next spring craft program and today we're going to be doing puzzle piecers. And this is your take and make bag that you should have received here at the library when you registered. And that bag has all of the supplies you'll need to make two whole picture frames. Um, and these picture frames, you could end up hanging them up in your bedroom. You could give them as a gift to somebody for Mother's Day, which is coming up here in May, on May 9th. Um, so there's a couple of different options for what you can do when you're done with your project. Um, and your take and make bag, again, has everything that you're going to need to complete this project, except for either some scrap newspaper or maybe like an old plastic tablecloth, anything to cover your workspace with. We are going to be using paint. It is Crayola washable non-toxic paint. But again, we're going to get messy. We're going to get it on our hands. Um, so just be ready to be messy. Um, I have an old t-shirt on today and I'm definitely going to be washing my hands throughout the project. Um, so just be ready for that. And we are going to be using those old puzzle pieces that I was talking about. And these are actually puzzle pieces from, board, from games or from puzzles that we have had in our collection here at the library. Um, and as they got checked in and checked out, um, pieces went missing. So we took them out of our collection and we're repurposing those puzzle pieces for our craft project here today. And part of this craft project, um, we were inspired by Earth Day, which is coming up on April 22nd. And one of the popular phrases around Earth Day um, is reduce, reuse, and recycle. Um, so we are reusing old puzzle pieces and we're repurposing those here today to make these wonderful picture frames um, for ourselves and or our mothers and grandmothers on Mother's Day. Um, so yeah, very exciting that we've kind of tied this project into Earth Day and we were inspired by that. So before we actually do our craft project, I'm going to read to you guys a, some facts about the Earth and the environment and just being responsible about um, how much trash we produce and what we're recycling and all that fun stuff. So we're going to read a couple of pages out of a book here in our collection. And then I'm going to jump right in to show you step by step how to do this project. And before we get messy with the project, I do want to let you know that there's going to be portions of the project that you have to sit and let it dry. Um, we are using glue sticks today, um, so we're going to need to you know, work on the project, let it dry, come back to it, work on it a little bit more, let it dry. Um, so it's going to be a couple of different phases that we're going to go through as I show you step by step. Um, and I have pre-made some things and let them dry already so that I can show you how to put it all together here today. Um, so I'm going to, as we go through all the steps, recommend to you when to set things out to dry and when to continue. So I'm really excited to do this project with you here today and I hope you just enjoy making some puzzle piece picture frames here with me for our Puzzle Piecers program. So let's jump right into some fun Earth Day facts and then we'll get into our project here. I am a huge fan of both Earth Day and recommending books to library patrons. So I'm going to take this opportunity to show you one of my favorite books in our juvenile nonfiction collection downstairs. And for those that may not remember, um, nonfiction means it's true or it's factual information. Um, so this book is called What a Waste, uh, Trash Recycling and Protecting Our Planet. Um, so by using and repurposing items here today, we are actually helping the environment because otherwise these kinds of things would just end up in the garbage. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just read some facts, just random facts from this book here. Um, again, this one has a lot of different information on where does our trash go. Um, you know, a lot of people, once they've put something in a trash can, they never think about it again. Um, but as somebody like myself who has really tried to educate myself on different recycling. Um, I just, I think about every single piece of garbage that I put in the trash and I always try to recycle whenever I can. Um, and we can recycle a lot of things like plastic bottles, uh, aluminum cans. Um, we can take back our deposit bottles to the grocery store and get our 10 cents back here in Michigan. Um, fun fact, not all states offer people to return those cans and get money back. So Michigan is actually one of the biggest states here in the United States for the bottle return 
um, service that we offer. So it's really a good thing here in the state of Michigan that we have that. Um, so here is one really interesting thing that I'm going to share with you. And this is on a page here in the book called Household Waste. So all of the trash that's coming just from people's houses. And it says, did we always throw away this much? In the past, people created much less waste. It was only in the 20th century that we first began to throw away so much. So what changed? Let's read to find out more. So it says, in 1900, things were often expensive or homemade. Old items were reused or fixed. Only things that were beyond repair were thrown away. Then in the 1950s, it says, plastic packaging had not yet been invented, so cardboard was used instead. Most electrical items were expensive and rarely thrown away. And then we hear our on present day, so today. Many things are wrapped in plastic packaging. It is cheap to make clothing and electronics, so we buy more than ever and throw lots away. So basically, we are not doing that whole reusing and repurposing thing. We are just buying new when things break or get old. Um, so just a lot more trash is being produced. Um, we're using a lot more plastic in things, which again, if you're not recycling, then it just goes into the you know trash can, which then goes to the landfill. And then it takes years and years and years to break that down, um, to compost it. Um, so let me see here, another page. Um, so this one actually says it's plastic forever is what the page says. Um, so this is just facts about plastic specifically. And here it says that nine, only 9% 9 of plastic is recycled. 12% of plastic is burned. 79% of plastic is buried in landfill or dumped on land or at sea. And then it says at the bottom here, around 20,000 plastic bottles are bought per second. Less than half of these are collected for recycling. So 20,000 plastic bottles. So every time you drink water out of a plastic bottle, 20,000 of those are being bought per second. That's a lot of plastic bottles. So just some quick facts about plastic. Um, and then let's see, what is this? So here is about our reduce, reuse, recycle model. Um, so here it says, let's see if you can see that. Um, around 75 million tons of waste are thrown away daily. And we can all save the world with the three R's. So number one is reduce. The best way to stop creating so much waste is to buy fewer things. Take a tote bag to the store instead of using plastic bags. And buy loose fruits and vegetables to avoid too much plastic packaging. So really good advice there on how to reduce our waste. And then number two is reuse. And that's what we're doing here today with our puzzle pieces. The next best thing you can do is reuse things instead of only using them once. Try a craft project to find new uses for old things. Cans and jars make great storage containers, while colorful paper can be used to wrap presents. So again, really, just really good idea to try to reuse things if you can. And then number three is recycle. And if you don't know what the universal symbol for recycling is, it's these three arrows. And again, a lot of times you see reduce, reuse, recycle with that symbol right here. And so under recycle, it says, for everything else, recycle as much as you can. Plastic is particularly difficult to recycle, so make eco-friendly swaps like using a paper bag that can be recycled in place of a plastic one that cannot. And here at the bottom it says, many people are trying to live zero waste lives. Some of them can fit their trash from a whole year inside a single jam jar. Could you imagine doing that? I know I've tried to recycle a lot, but I don't think I could get to a point yet where I can fit all of my garbage into a tiny little jar. 
It's a good challenge though for anybody. Um, so again, I just wanted to share some fun facts about recycling and trash and what happens when we throw things away or recycle. And you can check this book out from our collection and we have tons of other books all about you know what exactly happens to your trash when it leaves your house. Um, more books about the environment and what you can do to help um, save the climate and all sorts of fun information that you can read. And this one is especially fun because it's got all sorts of pictures and uh, images along with all the text and information. So it's just a fun book to flip through and read different, different information on recycling and waste. All right, crafters, I'm going to go over what you got in your take and make bag before we get started, just to make sure that everybody has everything in the bag. If you're missing anything that I'm talking about, make sure you send me an email or call us here at the library to let us know, because we want to make sure you have all the supplies you're going to need to do your picture frames today. So you should have one plastic bag that has all of the puzzle pieces in it, and then you're going to have another plastic bag that has two different cups of paint. So it's got blue and red paint. And then you're going to have one of these foam brushes. You should have a glue stick. You should have eight of these jumbo popsicle sticks, so four for one picture frame and four for another. And then you've got these Q-tips, and you're probably like, what are the Q-tips for? These are actually also gonna be used as paint brushes if you want. So if you wanna do polka dots, you can dip it in the paint and do polka dots. You can also make stripes pretty nicely um, with the Q-tips. So again, just a different form of a paint brush there. And then you've also got these fun sparkly gems. So we wanted to give you guys a little something sparkly to add to your picture frames if you wanted to. And I will also just say that if you have anything at home, um, like other craft supplies or stickers or other colors of paint or anything that you want to use for this project, please feel free to get those items out and add to it. I always love to see people personalize their projects. And also just a reminder that when you're done with your projects, you should send us a picture of your picture frames because we love to get those photo updates from our patrons during this virtual program time in our lives. So here is everything that you're gonna have in your bag. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and set up my tablecloth and get all my paint and everything out of the bag. So you should go ahead and do the same if you haven't already. And I will be back in just a minute to show you the step-by-step -step instructions on how to put your picture frames together. Okay, crafters, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to take our eight jumbo popsicle sticks and our glue stick and we're gonna glue them all together to make the base of our picture frames. And the first two things that we're gonna do are the gluing and then the painting of our puzzle pieces. And the reason that we're doing those two things first is that we need to make, make those parts and then let them dry. So we're gonna glue these and we're gonna paint and then we're gonna let everything dry before we move on to the next step. So when you've got your eight popsicle sticks laid out, go ahead and we're gonna take just the, the first two and we're gonna go ahead and open up our glue sticks. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna start by putting a bunch of glue on the top ends of the first two popsicle sticks. And when I mean a bunch of glue, I mean a bunch of glue. Um, don't be afraid to use up that glue stick. And I love the purple glue because you can see exactly where you're putting it and how much. Um, so just to give you an idea, I'm gonna zoom up here a little bit. Um, that is about how much glue I want on this side of the popsicle sticks. So just to show you. And then we're also going to put glue on a third popsicle stick. So both ends this time though, okay? So go ahead and just lather that glue on there. We want nice thick glue. And don't worry, this glue dries clear, if I didn't already say that. So we've got glue on the top two ends and then on both sides of this. And you're gonna take that and you're gonna flip it over and you're gonna press it down. And putting glue on both sides will just help it stay nice and stuck together and stay nice and strong. So we're just gonna hold down and I'm gonna count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now we're gonna do the same thing on this side. So we're gonna put glue here, and then we're gonna take our fourth popsicle stick and put glue on both ends, and then stick them together. Just 
stick that down. And again, I always like to count, so I'm gonna count to 10 here while holding that down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And then we're gonna do, so here is what we've got so far. And again, it's pretty fragile until it dries. And what I would also recommend is you put a stack of books on top. Um, it's just gonna help it straighten out and again, just help that glue dry nice and strong. Um, so again, I would recommend putting a stack of books on each of these when you are done. Um, I did test this out to make sure it helps. So again, I wouldn't be telling you anything if it didn't actually help. Um, so we're gonna do our next frame, same thing. Take your four popsicle sticks, start with the top here on both of these. Take one of these and do both sides. I'm just going to stick that down like that. And again, I always try to count. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And last side. And again, I would do the same thing with this frame. I would put a stack of books on top just to keep it weighted. Or you can do anything heavy. I shouldn't just say books, but you can do anything that's heavy um, that again will just help it dry nice and flat. So we're gonna hold it down again and we're gonna count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And again, just be pretty careful because until that glue dries, these are pretty fragile. So I'm gonna set those off to the side and I'm done with the glue stick for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put mine away and I am gonna get my paint and puzzle pieces out next. So I'll show you what we're gonna do with those. And this is the part where we're gonna get pretty messy. We're gonna get a lot of paint on our hands and the table. So make sure that if you haven't already, you protect your table from any paint or mess that we're about to make. Okay, so I've got my pile of puzzle pieces here and I've got my paint and my paintbrush. And this is the part where you can make some real decisions about how you want your picture frame to look. Um, so what, what I had intended is that we are gonna paint our puzzle pieces so that we can actually make our frame a little bit more colorful um, and not just have it be that wood color that the popsicle sticks are. Um, so what you can do is you could decide to paint all of your puzzle pieces red or you could decide to paint all your puzzle pieces blue. Or because you've got a whole mishmash of different puzzle pieces, let's say you're like, you know what? I actually like them just like this, you know, not painted at all. And you can do the color side up when you glue them to the actual picture frame. Like, I think that would look pretty cool having a bunch of, you know, different puzzle pieces of different sizes and colors collaged together. Um, you could also decide to save half your puzzle pieces and, you know, paint half of them and keep half of them as is. So a bunch of different options and it's all up to you as the crafter. So you need to decide what color, if any, you want to paint them. Um, if you decide to not paint any, then all you have to do is wait for your popsicle sticks to dry um, before you glue all of them on. Um, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I personally want to save half of my puzzle pieces. So I wanna make one whole frame with just really cool mix mash of colors of different puzzle pieces. So I'm gonna save this pile of puzzle pieces for, my, for, for me to paint. And here's the thing, what I found out is it's easier to paint the backside if you're gonna paint them. So, so for instance, here is one of the puzzle pieces and this is the front side, it's got some colors on it and I would recommend you flip them over and paint the plain side. That way you only have to do like one or two quick coats of paint and it's easily covered and dried. And here's the thing again, if you choose to paint, you can pick between red or blue. You could also, what happens when you mix red and blue paint? You get purple, so there's an option for you as well. And we did put tape over the lids, um, and that was just to protect the lids from coming off in our take and make bags. So I am gonna choose to paint uh, my half of the puzzle pieces red. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by just flipping them all over to be on that plain side. And then I'm gonna break open my paint jug. 
And if you decide, you know, you're not going to use both paint colors, you can just save the paint. Um, it'll stay, you know, nice and wet here in these little containers, and you can use it for a different project. So where you can reuse or repurpose what we've given you here today to do a whole nother craft project. Um, and continue to be inspired by Earth Day. So, I've got my red paint here, um, and then just a reminder that it is just Crayola washable non-toxic paint. And I'm gonna use my lovely foam brush. And this is where I get really messy. I get a lot of paint on my hands during this part. Um, so don't be afraid to get messy with me. And we're just gonna paint all of our puzzle pieces. So here I go, I'm just gonna paint, paint, paint. Um, and again, you can pick what color. You could mix your two colors together to make purple. Um, whatever you want to do here, it's all up to you. That's why I love arts and crafts because you can just make all sorts of decisions on your own on what you want your craft project to look like. And we just love to inspire our patrons um, with all sorts of creative ideas so that you guys can pick what you want to make and make beautiful art. And I don't know about you, but I do not like the way that paint smells. So ugh, I'm gonna do this quick here. And again, once you're done painting your puzzle pieces, you want to let them dry completely. It'll take a few hours probably, but just don't be impatient during this, this part of the project. Um, I know it's hard because you're excited and you want to finish your projects, but it's just really a great idea for you to wait until your puzzle pieces are completely dry before you start touching them. So, again, um, we're going to just do, I'm going to do two quick coats um, of the paint, and that's what I found covers really well and it dries really nice. So, um, if you wanted to do... Um, more than that because you just want it to be darker, you want it to be better covered, that's fine too. Um, you do whatever you want to do here. And if you decide you wanted to paint the other side of the puzzle pieces, that would be fine too. Um, let's say you know you were really into that whole collaging with different colored pieces but you still wanted to make them all kind of one color. Um, you can paint one light coat of paint over the puzzle piece on the front and you can still see the colors from underneath. So it's just kind of a cool effect. Um, and I'm gonna actually show you just one example piece. So um, again, my hands are pretty dirty here, but you can see that there's all sorts of colors on that side. And when you take the red paint, um, you see the red, but then you also still see some of the colors or patterns um, from that actual puzzle piece. So again, that's what that looks like. So just another option for you guys um, to think about in terms of what you want your project to look like. So I'm going to do a, just a quick second coat on all of my puzzle pieces. And then since I've got a bunch of paint on the table here, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move them to dry um, to a different part of the tablecloth where there's not a bunch of paint on it. That way, um, hopefully they won't stick because if I just leave them in the gobs of paint that I have on the table now, they might stick to the tablecloth. And because it is paper, since the puzzle pieces are just a different kind of paper, um, they might stick and rip. So again, just once you're done, move them to kind of a clean space in your work area. So here we go. I only have a couple more left. Okay, so I've given my puzzle pieces a second coat of paint, and again, I'm just going to move them to a completely clean spot on my table here, and that way there's less of a chance that once they're completely dry that they'll be stuck to my tablecloth. Um, and this is the part where once you're done doing all of your painting of your puzzle pieces, you can clean up your messy space um, because we are done with the paint. Um, unless, so here's another option, because again, we're just all about your options here in crafting. Um, once your picture, your puzzle piece or your picture frames with the popsicle sticks, once those are dry, the glue has dried, you could decide to also paint the popsicle sticks if you wanted to. I'm not going to show you that part, um, but if, again, if you wanted to, you can actually wash with just warm water the paint out of your paintbrush. Keep it to dry and then once again your popsicle sticks 
the glue is dried, you can paint that either red or blue or purple if you mix your two colors. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my workspace a little bit now and I'll be back in just a few to show you the last few steps to finish your picture frames. All right, crafters, so you can see that I have cleaned up my workspace here. Um, I've taken care of my paintbrush, um, and I have the rest of my supplies kind of laid out here for you. Um, so again, I have my uh, popsicle stick picture frame base, which has completely dried. So again, my puzzle pieces and my popsicle sticks are completely dry. I gave the popsicle sticks and the puzzle pieces about three to four hours to dry completely. They might be done sooner than that, so just periodically check on them if you're you know, in a rush to finish your project. Um, and just a reminder that you can choose to paint your um, picture frame bases if once they're dry if you choose to um, I still have my paint here off to the side with my q-tips because I love polka dots so I think I'm gonna add some polka dots to my picture frame when I'm done and here again are is a place where you have some options about what you can do with all your pieces here um, so you can make um, your entire picture frame. You can add puzzle pieces to the entire thing. You could decide to do just two sides of it and maybe add some jewels to the top. Um, you know, if you're making this as a present for Mother's Day, maybe if you have, you know, crayons or markers at home, you can write, I love mom, or happy Mother's Day, or, you know, write your name on your own picture frame. So a bunch of different options for things that you can do. Um, again, if you have other supplies at home that you want to use at this point, that's fine too. Um, something, you know, so if you have a bunch of old yarn at home, you could decide to, you know, wrap sides of your popsicle sticks. Um, and then, you know, a couple of the sides could be yarn wrapped. Um, so again, anything that you have at home that you might want to use, you should feel free to do that. Um, we've just given you starter supplies to make a wonderful picture frame with. So I'm just going to show you how we do this. Um, so we're going to take our glue stick and we're going to, I kind of, I have kind of planned it out in my head how I want to make my first picture frame look. So I'm going to go ahead and take my red puzzle pieces and I'm gonna put glue on the back side um, and because your your whole puzzle piece isn't actually gonna be glued to the entire popsicle stick you don't have to cover your whole puzzle piece with glue um, I'm just doing kind of a circle the size of my glue stick um, so if you see there that's the back side and you can see that purple dot of glue there and again I'm not going light on the glue I'm putting a bunch of glue on there and then I would recommend that when you add your puzzle pieces to your popsicle stick, you also put glue on the popsicle stick. So I've got my dot of glue here, I've got my dot of glue there, and now I'm gonna push them together. And again, I'm just gonna count to five for this part. So one, two, three, four, five, and I am pushing down. And so when I lift it up, puzzle piece stays. Um, and again, it's just the, the two-sided glue thing, it just helps that um, make a connection and stay a little bit better glued on there. And what I'm gonna do is I am just going to continue a row of these red puzzle pieces. And I'm gonna kind of skew or you know tilt my puzzle pieces here. Um, and again, the purple glue dries clear, so if you see that and you're like, oh, it looks terrible, don't worry, it's gonna dry clear, I promise. Because um, you can't even see the purple glue for when we um, glued our popsicle sticks together anymore. And I like mixing the different sized puzzle pieces. Um, if you're somebody who wanted all the same puzzle pieces, you could try to pick the similar sizes. Um, but I really like this look so far. And now I'm going to actually go on this whole other side here. Um, I want to put some on that side as well. And I really enjoy this gluing part. I don't know why. I just really enjoy putting these puzzle pieces on there, going in different directions. It's almost like the anti-puzzle because we're not actually putting the puzzle together. Um, so. so yeah, just take your time in gluing your 
pieces on the way that you want them to. Um, you could even layer your puzzle pieces um, and you could do a whole nother layer on top of the first row that you have, um, which I think I'm actually gonna do here. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. I'm a very visual learner, so when somebody tells me something, I also need to see it um, to really understand what they want me to do. Oh, I forgot. See, I forgot to put glue down. And I was wondering why that one didn't want to stick. Okay, I'm gonna do one more puzzle piece on that side. So there, I've got my puzzle pieces on both sides so far. And then like I said, if you wanted to do like a whole second row, you could take a bunch of your puzzle pieces and just layer them and glue them on just like that. Um, so I don't think I'm gonna have enough of my red ones to do that on my whole thing. So I'm just gonna keep gluing mine on here. And I hope you guys are kind of having fun and figuring out where exactly you want all your puzzle pieces. Um, it's kind of, again, a fun little experiment here on how they best look and fit together. I want that one to go the other direction. And here I'm kind of gonna see which piece fits best because I want to just do one more right here and then I'm gonna do that other side. So what is your favorite thing about doing arts and crafts? I know I have a lot of favorite things about doing arts and crafts, but what are some of your favorite things to do? Or why do you like arts and crafts? Just think about that, because I can tell you all the reasons that I love to do arts and crafts, but it's also fun to think about why you might enjoy doing some arts and crafts. I love just having something to be proud of at the end. Um, when I was growing up, actually more when I was in high school and college, so I was a little bit older, um, but I started hand making all of my like birthday gifts for people and Christmas gifts, and I found out that people love handmade gifts. So I think if you were to make one of these picture frames for your mom or your grandma or somebody special in your life for Mother's Day, they would love it so much. So. Here you can see I have all of my puzzle pieces glued on and what I'm gonna do next, I think, is add some polka dots. Um, and I'm actually gonna open up my blue paint here, which I just kinda sprayed out the bottom a little bit. Um, I should have kept my tablecloth down, but I just didn't think I was gonna get that messy. So I'm just gonna carefully peel back that tape and try not to make too much of a mess. Um, so here I'm gonna take one of my Q-tips and I'm gonna add blue polka dots. So again, I'm just gonna take my Q-tip here and dip it in and add all sorts of fun polka dots. And you can also take the Q-tips and you could make stripes. That's a really fun one to try. Um, but yeah, I really, really have a fun time adding polka dots with these Q-tips. So I've added some wonderful polka dots to my picture frame here. So I am all done with this one. I'm gonna set it off to the side so that it can dry completely. Um, you wanna give it plenty of time to dry. And I'm gonna show you um, what I want my second one to look like. And this is where I'm gonna use some of those jewels. Um, so let, give me just one second to kinda re-clean up my space here and I'll be back in just another minute to show you my second picture frame. Okay crafters, so here's what I have left from my take and make bag. I have my second 
um, popsicle stick frame base and then I have those puzzle pieces that I chose not to paint and then I have all of my little jewels and I'm gonna combine these two um, to make a really fun colorful uh, picture frame here so I'm gonna go ahead and take my glue stick I got glue everywhere on the outside so I'm gonna just clean that up really quick apparently I'm a very messy crafter that's okay because we can always wash and clean ourselves up after this so here's what we're gonna do here's what I'm gonna choose to do I'm gonna do puzzle pieces on opposing sides and then I'm going to do jewels on the other side so um, again again I'm doing the color side up on the puzzle pieces I chose not to paint um, so I'm just gonna start here just one at a time um, adding those to my picture frame and again I have a lot of fun deciding how to position the puzzle pieces onto my actual frame and again, see, I forgot to put the glue on the popsicle stick. It's really easy to do, and then all of a sudden you're like, why is that not sticking? Oh, because I forgot to do that. And I think I called it an experiment earlier, but I do, I do consider arts and crafts some kind of an experiment because sometimes you try something and all of a sudden you're like, well, I didn't really like that. So you kind of undo it and try something else. And that's what I love about arts and crafts is you can just try so many different things. There's just so many different options um, for things that people can do. Now, see, again, I keep, I keep saying it and then I keep not doing it. So, and I'm getting glue all over my fingers. So I'm definitely gonna have to wash my hands once we're done with this part. <laughs> I like this really bright orange one that I'm gonna put on the end there. Whoop. Getting to the end of my glue stick here. I used a, a glue stick that I've already used for a bunch of projects, which is why I'm running out. But hopefully you should not run out of glue stick because you have brand new glue sticks in your take and make bags. But if for some reason you do use a bunch of glue and you do run out of your glue stick, just give us a call here at the library and I can set one aside for you. Um, that is not a problem. Okay, I'm gonna pick some of these very carefully. So I'm gonna take this blue one, this one's fun. And you might even recognize, um, you know what else is fun while we're doing this project, is trying to guess what the puzzle piece actually has on it. Um, there was one puzzle that we used that was, uh, I think, Looney Tunes, so you might see some Looney Tunes characters in your bags. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we had some nature puzzles, we had some, some houses, there was one I think that was a boat. Um, so just really fun to kind of look at all the different puzzle pieces and, and uh, try to take guesses as to what what it might be okay so I think I have room for one more puzzle piece and I want to do this one's this one's got some fun fun colors on it almost looks like a, a flag of some kind <laughs> so so yeah I'm gonna add one more puzzle piece to this side and then I'm gonna take those jewels and add them to the other two sides to make kind of a bedazzled picture frame. And the fun thing is, is you might have supplies left over, like the paint, um, or even the puzzle pieces, or the jewels, and again, I encourage you to hold on to those and reuse them and repurpose them for another craft project. Um, again, this is all about using old things and turning them into new, beautiful things. Um, okay, this purple jewel is like my favorite thing. All right, guys, I got to pause the video and go get a new glue stick. So I got to also wash my hands. So I'll be right back to finish this project up. All right, sorry about that, guys. I had to go get another glue stick because, um, again, I used one that I had been using for other craft projects here. Um, so I ran out of glue. But I'm going to continue putting my globs of glue. Um, and with the jewels, again, you can't really overdo it on the glue. I would do more glue than you think you need. Thank you. 
I would say the jewels are probably the part where I have to have the most patience um, because the back shiny side of the jewels is, is so flat and slick that the glue, um, the glue stick is just having a hard time kind of grabbing onto things. So if you kind of see there, that's how I've kind of applied my glue is in like a little goopy and then I do my layer on the popsicle stick and then I just push down. And I'm just gonna keep adding my jewels. And I'm so excited for you guys to do this project and see what you come up with. So I really hope that you will consider sending us some pictures of your picture frames when they're all done. I know that sounds funny for me to say, picture of your picture frame. Um, but again, because this is a virtual program and you can't, staff can't see you here at the library, we would love for you to send us a picture or a video of you doing this project. Um, so here is my last jewel that I'm gonna add. So as you can see, I have quite a few leftover supplies. Um, and I'm gonna just be careful in cleaning that up here. Okay, so I'm done with my glue stick. I'm done with my glue. I'm gonna wipe that up a little bit. I'm gonna push these off to the side. So here is my second picture frame. And again, mine are still wet and drying, so I'm just trying to be very careful when I move them until they are all done. But there is my polka dot frame, and there is my, here, let's see if I can pick them up and be really careful with them. Okay, so there are my two picture frames. And I think I'm gonna end up keeping one of these for myself, and I might even give my own mom one of these for Mother's Day. Um, and Mother's Day this year is Sunday, May 9th, in case anybody was wondering. Um, so again, a couple weeks from now. Um, so fun little project here. And again, I hope you guys will consider sending me some pictures. I hope you will stop in and maybe check out some books from our nonfiction collection to learn more about Earth Day and recycling and what happens to our trash. Um, but again, I just hope you have so much fun crafting and I hope that you will consider signing up for our next craft project, which is coming up in May and that's called Sun Catcher Creations. So check out the library calendar because you won't want to miss out on that fun program as well. So see you all next time crafters!